In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last and beloved Bashar Muhammad, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. The title of this lecture is Disproving Evolution in Three Easy Steps. I will show brothers and sisters in this presentation how to show that the theory of evolution is false in three very easy to understand steps. And the reason I concentrate on disproving this theory is because a lot of people take this theory as a kind of a scientific basis for them denying the existence of Allah God Almighty. Like believers, they take the scientific miracles in the Quran as like a, um, a mean for them for strengthening their faith and delivering the message to people. The atheists, those who deny the existence of God, they take evolution as a way for them to, to be com uh, comfortable with their kind of denying of the existence of God. So it is our duty as Muslims to show the atheists and those who believe in this theory that it's false such that they will be guided to the path of Allah God Almighty the most merciful and that they will have happiness in this life and the hereafter and the way I will disprove this theory is taken from the guidance of the last revelation to people in the Quran where Allah God Almighty states in the Quran in chapter 27 verse 64 the following is it not he who originates creation and shall thereafter repeat it and who provides for you from heaven and earth? Is there any God with Allah? Say, bring forth your proof if you are truthful. So here Allah God Almighty teaches us a general principle is that if anybody makes any claim like those who make the claim of evolution and they try to explain how life originates on this earth and how we as humans, we reach this stage. So if anybody makes any claim, Allah God Almighty tells you to analyze the proof made for this claim. So Allah says in the, in the verse, bring forth your proof if you are truthful. So Allah tells us to analyze the proof the, the put forward for this claim. And this is what I will do in this lecture. I will analyze the proof put forward by evolutionists and to show you the falsehood of this proof, that this proof is false, with very straightforward, clear logic, scientific logic. So let's start with step one. As I said, disproving this evolution theory in three steps. Step one is to analyze the proof put forward. So, to start with the, a very simple definition for evolution, this is taken from Wikipedia, and let's see this definition for evolution. In biology, evolution is change in the genetic material of a population of organisms from one generation to the next. Though the changes produced in any one generation are small, differences accumulate with each generation and can over time cause substantial changes in the organisms. This process can culminate in the emergence of new species. Indeed, the similarities between organisms suggest that all known species are descended from a common ancestor or ancestral gene pool through this process of gradual divergence. The basis of evolution is the genes that are passed on from, one, from generation to generation. These produce an organism's inherent traits. So what I will want to concentrate here on the, in this definition is the following, that the basis for evolution theory, that the basis of evolution is the genes that are passed on from generation to generation, these produce an, an organism's inherent traits. So I explain this in the following figure. The, the picture you see on the left, on the far left, changes occurring in a certain generation, like for example a fish, started to develop the beginnings of legs when it wants to go to the land. These changes are coded for, memorized in genes within DNA, and this information is passed from one generation to generation such that the next generation does not start from zero, it starts from the next uh, stage. 
So I hope this is clear, and this is the, the claim put forward by evolutionists uh, about the theory of evolution. So the basis here, let's go to the heart of the matter, that evolution says that the genes that are found in DNA, they are the ones responsible for passing the characteristics of a creature from one generation to another. So, what I will do is to go to the heart of the matter and to ask the following question. This is step two. Can genes, DNA, code for creatures' traits, design characteristics? So the question now, can genes, the DNA, can it code, can it memorize the design characteristics of a creature? Because if the answer for this question is no, that the DNA, the genes, they cannot memorize the changes occurring in a certain generation of, of the organism, then there is no basis for a theory of evolution. Because the main pillar of the theory of evolution is that genes, they, they memorize the changes occurring in a certain generation, so that the next generation will not start from zero, it will start from the next kind of evolutionary um, stage. So you will see now, by very straightforward, very simple explanation, that genes, the DNA, cannot memorize the design of the creature. So it cannot pass this information from generation to another. So this, this proves and this shows the falsehood of the theory of evolution, that this claim has no basis whatsoever. Let me explain this using pictures. So here we have picture A, pictures A, B, and C. Start with A. Here we have a picture of human cell, and the human cell is the workspace of DNA and genes. So the DNA and the genes, the gene is a part of the DNA which um, has the information for the manufacturing of a certain protein. And the proteins that are the building blocks of organisms. Like, give you an example, an analogy for this. Uh, think of the cell as a factory, and the, D, the G, genes and the DNA like the blueprints in the factory, the information there, and the proteins, they are the, for example, if this factory produces bricks for a building, the, the proteins, they are the, the, the bricks, the building blocks for a structure. So we know that the DNA and the genes, they work only inside the cell. So once the proteins are produced, the, let's concentrate now, please, on the picture labeled as B, the one in the middle. So suppose we have collagen molecules, collagen proteins. So when the collagen proteins, they leave the cell, they are no longer under the control of DNA. Like the factory producing bricks. When they bricks, they leave the factory, they are no longer under the control of the blueprints. So the big question now, how can collagen proteins know to be arranged in, for example, the human hand. I showed here the human hand as an example. How can collagen proteins arrange themselves, or know to arrange themselves, in the shape of a hand, or a, the skull, or the uh, bones? How can proteins know to arrange themselves in this complex structure? And the example I just told you, the factory produced the bricks. Now, how can the bricks know to be arranged in this, in the, in the, like a building? So this shows, without any shadow of a doubt, that the design of a creature is not under the control of DNA. The, the responsibility of the DNA is only to produce the basic building blocks, like the responsibility is to produce the bricks, the glass, the aluminum uh, sections needed for a building. But how these sections are arranged is not under the control of DNA. So if changes occur in a certain generation of an animal, like for example the fish developing the beginning of legs. This design cannot be memorized, cannot be coded for in the genes. The genes cannot memorize this code. So how can it pass it on from one generation to another? It's impossible. Again, if for example um, a fish starts developing design changes. Now this design change the DNA cannot code for it. It cannot memorize this design change and pass it on because it works only within the cell. And the cell, the responsibility of the cell is to produce the basic building blocks. But how these building blocks are arranged in a hand or a skull is not under the control of DNA. So the whole premise, 
the whole kind of basis for, for evolution is false. It's not correct. Because genes, they cannot pass the design information of a creature from one to another. Very st- and the, the, what, I, what I said, whether you have a degree, a college degree, or not, whether you are a professor or a, a school kid, it's very straightforward, very simple to understand, and it demolishes the basis for evolution. Simply, genes cannot do what evolutionists, they claim that they can do, that they can inherit and can pass over, can um, transfer the design of a creature from one generation to another. It can't. The only thing genes can do, they can produce, they can contain information for the production of the building blocks of a creature. But the design, how these building blocks they are designed in the take the form, it's another mechanism uh, completely. So with all cell sciences, with all the biochemistry, with all genetic engineering, no no one knows the mechanism of how the design of the creature, how these proteins they are arranged in a design of a of a cat, of a human. Or, or another creature. The only book on the face of the earth which contains this information, the mechanism on how these proteins, they arranged, take the form of a creature is the Quran, the last revelation of Allah got to people. This is the only book which contains information. No book you will find in cell chemistry or cell sciences, it doesn't contain how the, the proteins, they know how to arrange themselves in the shape of a hand. And of course, it's not under the control of DNA. So the, this subject of, of how the, what the mechanism is for the kind of uh, the arrangement of the proteins in the shape we see in a human, for example, I will talk about Allah God willing in another presentation, another lecture, and it's taken from the Quran. But for now, for the purposes of ending the theory of evolution, I think what I said will suffice, is sufficient. Because the basis for evolution that genes to pass on the design characteristics, they can't. And the, the picture, I want to refer you once again to the picture you see on the screen. This is a very simple flow diagram. It shows that the DNA cannot pass on the design information of a creature because simply it, it doesn't have this kind of information. It can memorize the design of the building blocks like collagen, elastin, the proteins, but how these um, proteins are, take, are formed in the shape of a hand or a, or a skull is simply it's not in the genes or DNA. It's a completely other, uh, different mechanism. So, step three, uh, of course these steps in disproving evolution, we now know that there is no known mechanism for theory of evolution, so then can you trust such a theory? So the third and the last step in disproving evolution, I showed with very straightforward logic and science that the genes, they cannot do what evolutionists they claim. So after this, can you trust such a theory? It has no basis. And if we ponder upon the following two verses from the Quran in chapter 17, verses 81 and 82, which say, And say, the truth has come and falsehood has vanished. Surely, falsehood is ever bound to vanish. And Allah God sends down from the Quran that which is a healing and a mercy to those who believe. And it increases the wrongdoers, nothing but loss. So Allah God is saying here that truth has come and falsehood has vanished. And in our example, truth is the fact of creation. And falsehood is the claims that people make to disprove creation, like the theory of evolution. And again, brothers and sisters, I'm showing you this in an effort for you to be guided to the path of Allah God Almighty. And not to follow guesswork and conjecture, because many people, they wasted their life in, in developing evolution theory and it's a wasted effort. So Allah God Almighty wants you to be guided. And please, brothers, let's share this with others in an effort 
that people will have happiness in this life and after by realizing their Creator, Allah God Almighty, the most compassionate, the most merciful. And to know more details about this topic, please visit my website at www.quran-miracle.com and you can email me at zquran at gmail.com and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all.